Hey guys, Kritika here, your favorite dietitian, I hope. Don't tell me I'm not your favorite in the comments. That's gonna make me feel sad. I have a master's degree in clinical nutrition and during my degree, I actually learned how to read and interpret research. I'm super passionate about the topic today because there's just so much misinformation out there. As always, I am here to help you understand nutrition, filter misinformation, and stay happy and healthy. If you're into that, do subscribe to my channel. But for now, let's get into what stevia is, where does it come from, what's the research behind it, is it safe? All that and more coming up right now. Stevia comes from the leaf of a stevia plant and there's many different kinds and brands like Truvia, Purevia, and Enlighten. And stevia is about 200 to 400 times sweeter than regular sugar. So as you can imagine, you need a lot less of it. With regular sugar, you might put a full tablespoon and with stevia to get that same sweet taste, you might need about a teaspoon and a half. There is something called an ADI, which is the amount that you should not exceed about four milligrams per kilogram of your body weight per day. That's gonna be equivalent to about nine packets of stevia for a 132 pound person. And there are many different types of stevia that are sold. So we have fresh stevia leaves, we have dried leaves, but these whole stevia leaves are actually sold as dietary supplements. And the reason is because there's actually not enough research on the toxicology of these stevia leaves. It's allowed to be called a dietary supplement because of the less strict regulations that dietary supplements have. If it was considered a food additive like the white powdered stevia or the liquid stevia, that actually has stricter regulations in place before it reaches the market. There are also liquid concentrates, which you might see as those stevia drops. So let's take a look at some of these ingredients on these different varieties. This particular one that I have, if you look at the ingredients, you will see erythritol is the first ingredient, and that is a sugar alcohol. For people who have GI issues, like those with IBS, this might not be the best for you because you might just be a little bit more sensitive to this than the average person. But something interesting about sugar alcohols like erythritol is that it's absorbed half as sugar and half as fiber. So say you have five grams of erythritol. Oh, right here. So see how it says three grams of erythritol? That means 1.5 grams is gonna be absorbed as sugar in our body. And the other 1.5 grams is gonna be excreted in our poop, kind of like fiber. So in three fourths of a teaspoon of stevia, you're only really getting truly 1.5 grams of actual sugar, which does not spike your blood sugar or affect your blood sugar. Say you're getting about 60 grams of erythritol, which would be about 30 grams of sugar. That's enough to spike your blood sugar for sure. Some varieties of stevia also contain something called maltodextrin. Now, is that a concern? Well, it depends on how much you're consuming of this product. If you're using a lot of this, it can add up. And since maltodextrin is kind of like a starchy substance that can raise our blood sugar, this product can possibly raise your blood sugar if you consume a lot of it. But if you're only using a teaspoon or so, it's not gonna spike your blood sugar. And that's actually been shown in multiple research studies, and this is one of them. And if we look at the research, done on stevia and blood sugar, you see that stevia does not raise our blood sugar and that's actually been shown by multiple research studies. So in the dietetics community, we have something called the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They put out a position statement analyzing the strength of the evidence and the research on all of these non-nutritive sweeteners that are approved in the US. If we scroll to page 13, we find that they did look at the research and the strength of the research on stevia. From the research, it looks like stevia does not increase our blood sugar, it does not increase our blood pressure, in fact, it may decrease our blood sugar, and there's not enough evidence to show that consuming stevia is going to lead to weight loss or weight gain. And a grade two is pretty good because it means that there's a lot of research and there's a lot of evidence here answering this question, but there might be a little bit uncertainty here. There might be some minor exceptions. There might be the small sample size. Because we want to limit our sugar intake, and that goes for cane sugar, honey, molasses, agave, coconut nectar, dextrose, fructose, maltose, all of these things are still sugar. Though some may have a lower GI than others. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. If you're interested in that, do check out my video on sugars. But because multiple health authorities tell us to limit sugars to less than 10% of our calories, I'm not talking about fruit, I'm talking about added sugars. This is my opinion and my stance on stevia. That's where something like stevia can really come in handy. 
Because the thing is, you don't need a lot of it. Just a tiny bit goes a long way. Unless you're consuming a lot of it, I think that using stevia in moderation is totally fine. You like it? Totally fine. You don't like it? Don't have it. One thing I forgot to say is that in my opinion, stevia just has that weird bitter aftertaste and I never really liked it for that reason. But one day I ran out of Splenda, which is what I would normally put in my coffee and I had so much stevia, so I decided to give it a go. The first two, three, four days were horrible. After a few days, I didn't even taste that bitter aftertaste anymore. The taste buds just adapted to it. And then I actually started liking it. So if you find that you are someone that wants to use stevia, but you're hesitant because you don't like the taste, Give it a couple days for your taste buds to adapt because that tends to happen with salt and sugar too. Anyways, moving on. Personally, I think it's great for diabetics, great for those who are trying to lose weight, especially if you're using it to replace some of these other sugars in your coffee, in your tea, in your baked goods. Looks like what the research is lacking on is if adding it to your diet while not changing anything else is actually gonna do anything. We might not know that right now. Maybe we'll find out in a couple years. But the thing is, if you enjoy it, go for it. But I do wanna leave you with some things to think about. One, listen to your body. But what works for you may not work for someone else. Everyone is so unique and that's a beautiful thing. Some people may not like stevia because of the aftertaste. Some people may think it's causing something to happen in their body, but that doesn't mean that that's gonna be true for every single person. Our bodies are so unique and individual. Another thing, I mean, another thing to think about, I didn't really want to talk about this because, ugh. I don't want this video to be too long. Confounders. If you feel that, oh, well, this sweetener is giving me a headache, I would encourage you to ask yourself, what else have you changed? Because there's so many different causes of headaches. And because there's so many things that we do in the day and so many things that go in our body, so many things that we may not be putting in our body, like water, there could be so many different causes of a headache. And even though we might be so sure that it's one thing, we have to ask ourselves, what else has changed? What else have we been doing? Is it possible? that there's something else going on in our body or not going in our body that might be causing a headache. So personal anecdotal experience should not translate to advice. As you saw in this video, I did not talk about what I did and then give you advice based on that. I talked about the research. So it's all about the research and the evidence first. And then you do what's best for you. You make your decisions based on what feels good for your body and what you like. If you're against stevia or other non-nutritive sweeteners, then don't have it. But don't spread misinformation and fear based on your personal experience or your opinions. Because there's some people out there who actually might really be benefiting from it. Don't make other people feel bad. Look to the facts, look to the research, look to health professionals like registered dietitians who are specifically trained on all things food and nutrition. Think critically, if somebody is saying something is really bad for you, what are their credentials? Where are they getting their information from? And are they benefiting or selling something? Do they have any biases? Are they giving you information to make you feel insecure about something that you're doing because they wanna sell you a product? Are they misinterpreting research? Are they leaving parts of the story out and not telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Does it sound very extreme? Does it sound too good to be true? Consider the source, read beyond just the headlines. Click on the links that they're citing. I've seen so many articles, and I'm talking about articles like on Washington Post or CNN or something, that seem to be seemingly citing research and saying, oh, well, this study came out and said this, this, and this. And when you actually click on the study, it may not even be what they're saying that it is. Sometimes it's an animal study and they're acting like this it applies to human. Anyways, I'm just ranting at this point. If you enjoyed this, give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate you watching. Stay happy and healthy and I will see you. Ooh, I am thinking about doing my next video on what I eat in a day. Okay, okay, here's the thing. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to say. There's so much judgment. There's so much criticism. And at first when people came out with these what I eat in a days, I just felt like it was so weird. Why, why are people putting all over the internet what they eat? But I guess people are interested. We're nosy. We like to see what people eat. Some of us like to get ideas for meals, which is cool. I have been really afraid of receiving any judgment or criticism, but you know what? I think I have a positive message to spread and I do have a lot to say. I sent the poll. I saw you guys on Instagram. I saw you guys here. You guys want the what I eat in a day. You want it more than the coconut oil video. I see you. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I am officially done talking now. I'll, I'll see you guys next week. If All right, no bye. Money, you should never give her up. I think it's the way life changes when in love, yeah. I surround my soul with the positivity. That's why I don't worry about the things that I don't see, yeah. These days I don't worry about much. I think we should have some more fun. I still dream.